my name is Lucy Green and um, I am from the UK and I want to talk to you about an object which has captivated humans for millennia and it is of course the sun. This is my favourite object. Um, personally I became captivated by the sun when I started to look at the sun um, through space telescopes and most people will probably be familiar with this kind of picture of the sun. This is the visible light um, the visible surface of the sun, basically a blank disk with some dark sunspots on the surface. But there's more to the sun than this. And actually, the sun gives off light um, at other wavelengths, which is blocked by the Earth's atmosphere. For example, this wavelength, ultraviolet light. This is an image of the sun's chromosphere, and uh, it's taken at exactly the same time as the previous image. It looks totally different. And I want to draw your attention to something in the bottom right-hand corner, which is um, a cloud of gas plasma in the sun's atmosphere, which actually can erupt over time as seen in these sequences. But actually there's more to these sequence of images than meets the eye. And actually hidden in the signature of the hot gases here is a magnetic field. A very strong magnetic field and a magnetic field which is twisted up like a rope. And if you look carefully, you can see a helical structure in this gases here. Um, when these eruptions take place, we call them coronal mass ejections, and they represent an eruption of plasma and magnetic field into the solar system, which happens at great, great speeds. And uh, this is actually my area of research, and I find these, um, these events absolutely fascinating. And they happen all the time. We can go to shorter wavelengths of light and see the sun's hot million degree atmosphere, which is actually completely filled with magnetic fields. If you look carefully, you can see arches in the structure of the plasma here in these images. We can also look at the sun during times of a solar eclipse, both an artificial solar eclipse and a natural solar eclipse, as one that we're seeing here. This is a drawing that was taken in 1860 of a solar eclipse. And when you eclipse the sun, the bright light from the visible surface is blocked out and you can see very faint extended structures in the atmosphere. But the most exciting thing is this thing in the, in the red circle. This is a coronal mass ejection caught during the moment of totality but we didn't know what it was back in the 1860s, but we do today. And these are the kind of objects that I find fascinating. And uh, I study them all the time. I've studied hundreds now. And I really thought that I had seen everything the sun had to show until June this year, when an, a coronal mass ejection happened that was so massive, it took me by surprise. And the movie that got circulated on the internet, I didn't believe. So I went back to the NASA archive, and I got the data myself, and this is one of the images I downloaded. The eruption happened from the region in the black circle. It looks fairly ordinary, but it did something really spectacular. When this magnetic structure erupted into the solar system, it took so much plasma with it that some of it did indeed um, erupt into the solar system, but a lot of it was pulled back down to the surface of the sun due to gravity, and you can see the cloud of dark material falling back to the sun's surface there. For the material that did make it into space, it produced a coronal mass ejection, and it uh, the magnetic structure rapidly expanded to become many times the size of the sun itself. The, the sun is shown in these images by the smallest of the orange circles. But there's another outflow of plasma and magnetic field from the sun that I want to talk to you about. And that's something called the solar wind. It was first evidenced by the presence of comet's tails. Comet's tails point away from the sun, and in fact they're blown out by the solar wind. The solar wind isn't exotic. It's just the expansion of the sun's magnetic and plasma atmosphere into the solar system. It blows out over the planets. It keeps blowing out for 17 billion kilometers. And we know that now because NASA's Voyager spacecraft are reaching the edge of the solar wind. So for the first time, we have information at these vast distances beyond the planets, and we're able to study what that part of space is like. And uh, our old view, actually, before the Voyager got there, was one like this. We thought the edge of the solar system was very uh, uniform, was very smooth, and that it was full of helical magnetic fields produced by an expanding atmosphere from a spinning sun. But NASA was surprised when, when they got to the edge with the Voyager spacecraft. They found that the edge of the solar system is foamy, and it's full of magnetic bubbles which are as wide as the distance between the sun and the Earth itself. 
Um, and in fact, when they, when they looked for a description, they decided it was like a ballerina skirt. And I kind of think that works quite well. So you've got the frothy, bubbly edge of the ballerina skirt and the folded up material representing the magnetic fields. But my point to finish on is that I don't think we should be surprised that the edge of the solar system is foamy. Because the sun is throwing out magnetic bubbles all the time with these coronal mass ejections. And where do they go? They end up at the edge of the solar system. Thank you.